Hey guys, how are you? Thanks for spending some time with me. Today I wanted to play with makeup and talk about movies. So I'll share some of the most recent movies that I've seen that I've really enjoyed. And the look that I'm doing today is inspired by this red cream or liquid eyeshadow. And it's by L'Oreal. It's their Brilliant Eyes Liquid Shadow. And the color is Radiant Ruby. So if you still need to get ready, then grab all your things and grab a drink or just relax and enjoy watching, but let's go. All right, so I already have my sunscreen on. It's been sitting for about 15 minutes or so. And the foundation that I'm gonna be using today is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. You can kind of see that here. Um, I haven't used it before. It looks a little bit dark, so I may use my um, number seven drops, and this is in the porcelain color, um, and I usually just need like one drop of this uh, to add into it just to lighten it up a tiny bit, but we'll see how this applies. I'm just gonna use my sponge, and we'll get into it. I just made sure to shake it really well and we're going to it's actually got a little like doe foot applicator i'm going to put a little bit on my little palette here and let's just see what this looks like um Yeah, this is the problem. So it might be okay on my face, but my neck is a little bit lighter than my face. So I, I find that I usually have to do something to try and correct that. Just added a drop of the number seven Match Made Custom Blend Foundation Drops. It's a mouthful. And we're just gonna mix everything together here onto my sponge and start applying. Seems to be pretty light in coverage. All right, so I guess as I'm doing this, I can talk about the first movie. The first movie that I saw is called I.O. And it's not the first movie I saw, but first movie I'm talking about is IO and it's about a young scientist who searches for a way to save a dying earth. She finds a connection with a man who's racing to catch the last shuttle off the planet. And this movie was surprising um, as far as enjoying it. I, I hadn't heard anything about it and I did know one of the actors in it, which I believe is Anthony Mackie. Yes, I know him. Um, and then the other main actor in it is Margaret Qualley, which I think I've seen her before in, in movies, in other movies, but not many. And I don't think she's that well known, but they both did a really good job. And, um, you know, the foundation of the of the movie or the plot of the movie was pretty good. It's kind of a quiet movie, so if you don't like movies that have a lot of uh, silent time, then you may not like this, but it kind of made sense for what the movie was talking about, you know? But this one I enjoyed. I don't know why I enjoy, you know, end of day or doomsday movies, you know, like the world is ending and you have to escape it in order to survive, but it's interesting. It's just, you know, like I try and think about what I would do if that situation were to occur. So it's just something different to think about, but it was good. I don't know that it was great, but it was good. And if you like those kind of movies, then then you will enjoy it. You may not have heard about it, so. I think 
think I have the first layer down and you know it looks nice I don't think it's amazing you know it's natural I usually look for foundations that might blur things a little bit in this area because I have texture but it's natural so that's good and we can always do a little bit more with concealer if I want because I usually you know like to cover up these spots a little bit more next we're gonna add in a little bit of a cream highlighter and this is just a little sample but it's by milk milk makeup and this is it's called lit so I'm just gonna take a little bit of that on my finger and I am gonna do this before I conceal because I think that you end up with a little bit more of a lit from within kind of look as opposed to doing highlighter as a last step. So uh, you'll, you'll see, it'll come together. So just a little bit on my finger here. So the next movie I'm gonna talk about is Anon, A-N-O-N, and it's short for anonymous, but let's see, in a world without anonymity or crime, a detective meets a woman who threatens their security. It's in the future, uh, based in the future, and I always tend to like movies like that as well, just using your imagination and seeing the technology or what possible technology may come to be. The two main actors in it are Clive Owen and Amanda Seyfried. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, I like both of them. They both have done really good things with their roles that they choose and, you know, actually acting them out. But I hadn't heard anything about and all of a sudden I saw that it was, it was out and watched it and was pleasantly surprised. It was a very, like, very natural highlight. Um, I'm not sure I see it too much. <laughs> I don't know, can you? Maybe. We're gonna go in with concealer and we're gonna be using the Pat McGrath Labs. And this is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer Slash Corrector. Um, so that's that. And I'm just gonna use my little palette again to put a small amount on. And I'm gonna take a small fluffy brush, it's an eyeshadow brush, but I basically work it into the concealer on the palette. Work it into the brush there and very lightly go over the areas that I wanna conceal. Try not to apply a lot of pressure. All right, and then I'll take a more dense brush with that concealer to apply to any marks that I may want to cover up. And this concealer is dark enough that I can put it on my face as well and it's not going to end up highlighting it, or at least I don't think it is, so. And I may just, this is a very dewy foundation. The next movie I'm going to talk about is Cloud Atlas, which came out a few years ago, uh, 2012, and I hadn't seen it, but I love Tom Hanks, so I checked it out recently, and it's a movie that I feel like I need to watch again to really get everything out of it, but it's about an exploration of how the actions of individual lives impact one another in the past, present, and future as one soul is shaped from a killer into a hero 
and an act of kindness ripples across centuries to inspire a revolution. So it's a very complex movie. There's a lot of different little stories that you have to follow, which to me is very interesting. It just keeps your you know, mind active and trying to figure out what's happening and uh, what may happen and what's really going on in the big picture. So um, it's definitely interesting for sure. So check that one out if you haven't seen it. Before we set everything, I am using a cream blush and bronzer. So I'm gonna do that before I powder. Uh, and I'm gonna be using, they're both by Milk and um, the bronzer is the little mini size of it and this is just their baked matte bronzer. And then the blush is also a mini size and this is in the color work, R-E, no, W-E-R-K. Um, so we'll start with the bronzer and I'm just gonna take my um, Moda Pro brush and this is the BMX 120 angle brush and I'm just gonna work it into the bronzer like this. Start back here. All right, so the next movie we're gonna be talking about is The Oath, which came out in 2018. And the two main actors in it are Ike Barinholtz and Tiffany Haddish. And I love them both, they're hilarious to me. But this movie is not what they have typically done in the past, so expect the unexpected with that. Um, but it is about a politically divided America. A man struggles to make it through the Thanksgiving holiday without destroying his family. So I did watch this prior to Thanksgiving, um, so I'm a little bit late in talking about it. They did a good job. They're both really good actors. Um, it's just not a in-your-face funny movie like I've seen them normally do those are the roles that they normally do so um but they did good you know if you're okay with the fact that they're playing a more serious role then it is and it's something different to watch it's not your typical thanksgiving dinner kind of movie so So now we'll get into the blush and again taking my brush and working it into that. This is the e.l.f. small stipple brush. Yeah. Work it in there. I'm very shy with blush so I tend to be super super cautious with it. Cream blushes tend to go a long way, so you don't need that much. But they just look so natural, and you can really blend them out to the exact amount that you want, you know? All right, so I think I'm good with that. And you can take your beauty sponge and just kind of smooth out the edges. And now we're going to go into setting everything. So for underneath my eyes, I'm going to use the KK Beauty or KKW Beauty uh, in the number two Brighton. So this is what it looks like. Make sure there's no creasing. Mm -hmm. 
then before we set the rest of my face, I am gonna go ahead and put some primer on my eyelids. And this is the Painterly Pro Longwear Paint Pot. It looks like this. And I'll just take a little bit on the ring finger. Spread it. Spread it out. Now for the rest of my face, I'm going to go into CoverGirl Clean Fresh, and this is in Light Pale, and this is just a pressed powder. And I'm gonna do my T-zone and this part here. I don't really wanna set that, um, just cause I like it looking pretty shiny like that, so. Let's see, this is the BH Cosmetics V3 brush. And the next movie we're gonna be talking about is Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey. Um, this is perfect for Christmas time coming up it's perfect for family, for kids, for everyone. Anybody can watch it. I um, I enjoyed it even as an, an adult and I don't have any kids, which I still tend to like kid movies anyway, but it was so enjoyable. And it is a musical, which I don't tend to like, but it's not like the songs go on and on and on. Sometimes I feel like that's just what a, a, a musical is about, is just singing the entire time, but I liked that it wasn't a constant song, uh, the whole movie. So uh, just very magical and definitely will get you in the mood for the holidays. So an imaginary world comes to life in a holiday tale of an eccentric toy maker, his adventurous granddaughter and a magical invention that has the power to change their lives forever. Main actors in it are Forrest Whitaker, Keegan-Michael Key, Hugh Bonneville, Madeline Mills, um, Anika Noni Rose, and Felicia Rashad is also in there. It was incredible. It's a must-see for sure. So now we're gonna be getting into the liquid red eyeshadow and we're going to just go directly in. Put it on the lower part of the lid. And then take a eyeshadow brush. It's not super fluffy, but it's not a flat one. And we're just gonna work that into the lid. and blend it out. The good news with this is that you can always clean it up with a little concealer if you feel like you went too high with it. But it's a metallic-y, maybe metallic, it's a metallic color. <laughs> And it hasn't completely dried down yet, so I still have time to make sure it's nice and blended. I want to keep it pretty low here. I don't like to go too high with, with color in here. I feel like it looks more open. All right. So I'm going to take a clean brush just to clean up the edges a little bit. Or diffuse the edges, actually. So it's not a stark line. All right, so the next movie we're gonna be talking about is 10 by 10. And it's about a man who abducts a flower shop owner and holds her captive in a small soundproof room in an effort to extract a dark secret from her past. Main actors in it are Kelly Riley and Luke Evans. 
They both did an incredible job. This is an intense movie, but not too intense because I don't watch movies that are crazy intense or scary or suspenseful. I don't do that. And this one I was kind of like, mm, not really sure, but it was, um, it was good. It was a very interesting story. And if you're looking for an intense, you know, mystery kind of movie to, to know why he kidnapped her and what he was trying to find out from her, then it's definitely one to see. As far as the eye look, I think I'm pretty happy with it. I can keep blending with a clean brush if I'm not happy. I think the key point is not to go too high uh, with the doe foot when you're applying it and just work it into the crease and then I go slightly above the crease but only with the brush, you know, diffusing it out. So, you know, it's not, again, it's not a stark line there. It's not, I didn't use too much that it was difficult and I really had to blend and blend and blend. So it went pretty smoothly. The other thing that I'm going to do just to make it a little more sparkly is add in this uh, single shadow from Sephora and it's an amazing, amazing topper or even just alone on the lids. It looks beautiful. It's called Twinkle Twinkle, which really makes sense. So I'm just going to take a little bit with my finger and put it in the middle and in the inner corner. So pretty. I love it. All right, so now we're gonna do the other eye. So I'm just taking my blending brush and just making sure the edges are diffused and that they match. Okay, so I, it's not too difficult. I mean, I'm not a makeup artist and I was a little concerned when I was trying to do a red liquid eyeshadow, but they're really easy to work with. So the next movie we're going to be talking about is Tenet. T-E-N-E-T. -E -E um, fairly new release. And whew, this is a movie I got to watch again. If you saw Inception, it feels the same way, meaning when you're done watching it, you already know that you have to watch it again in order to try and understand what just happened, but like in the best way possible. It's so enjoyable. I mean, from the get-go, minute one, you're sucked in and they're on and you forget about reality. I don't even know how to describe this movie other than what I just said. It's really good. So 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 good definitely gotta check that one out um the main actor in it is john david washington and you also have robert pattinson and elizabeth debicki but john david washington man oh man amazing job all right so what are we doing next um i think we're gonna do a little setting spray and then we can do the eyebrows and some mascara and the lips. I'm gonna be taking the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray. I'm just gonna shake it really well and give it a go. Just 
going to curl the eyelashes and talk about the next movie, uh, which is called Ava. And the main actor in it is Jessica Chastain, but you also have John Malkovich, Common, Gina Davis, Jess Weixler, and Colin Farrell. Ava is a deadly assassin who works for a black ops organization traveling the globe specializing in high profile hits. When a job goes dangerously wrong, she is forced to fight for her own survival. Jessica Chastain is amazing. I haven't seen her do something that I don't like and always loved spy movies or assassin movies, which is crazy, but I do. I find them very interesting and stimulating uh, intellectually just to see how they work and how they do things even though they're bad things, but really good. I mean, violent, but really good. Okay, now we are just going to use a little pencil and the eyebrows, and it's by Music Flower. I think I got it on Ulta. All right, so the next or the last movie that we're gonna talk about is Enola Holmes. And if you haven't seen any of the Sherlock Holmes movies with uh, Robert Downey Jr., I'd highly recommend those. Is there two or three of them? I think there's two of them, but they're action-packed and there is mystery involved. I just love it. I love Robert Downey. Let's see, we've got as far as the stars in it, Millie Bobby Brown, Henry Cavill, and Sam Claflin. When Enola Holmes, who is Sherlock's teen sister, discovers her mother missing, she sets off to find her becoming a super sleuth in her own right as she outwits her famous brother and unravels a dangerous conspiracy around a mysterious young lord. So, I think I was already excited about it because I saw the Holmes movies and really liked them. And it just intrigues me that you now have a female lead character kind of doing the same thing that Sherlock Holmes was doing. And I was, I really loved those movies. So I, I thought I might like it, but she nailed this job, this acting job, and I really enjoyed it. so that is good and now we'll go in with some mascara and I'm using the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise it's a pretty popular one Now I'm just gonna take some of my got to be glued. It's like a hair gel, um, but I just put a little bit in here and keep it with my makeup stuff, but I'm just gonna coat a little tiny spoolie with it and work it through the eyebrows. This stuff is the best. The whole thing is like $7 and it's probably gonna last me 10 years. Unless it expires before then, but basically you get soap brows. So the eyebrows are done. That stuff is like super glue, by the way. I'm not going anywhere. So if you're going on a boat, <laughs> it's a good thing to have. All right. So now I'm just gonna put some nude eyeliner into my lower waterline. Now, I'm just 
got to figure out the lips. Just going to take off my lip gloss. And do we want a pinky nude or a brown nude? the brown nude so this is Milani understatement lip liner in cafe ole that is the complete look i hope that you guys enjoyed and either got ready with me or relaxed or figured out that you can easily do a red liquid eyeshadow or picked up some movies that maybe you want to watch so this was fun and i will check back in with you guys and let you know how the foundation wore since this is my first time wearing it um, but again that is the clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. I would definitely say it is a natural uh, finish, light coverage, dewy. I'm expecting that I'm going to get a little oily in the T-zone, but I think it looks very nice so far, and we'll see how it does throughout the rest of the day. Hey guys, just wanted to check in with you and give you an update, let you know how things are wearing. It's been about five hours now, and as you can see, I am a little bit oily, you know, a little bit more so than I would like to be, but I have an oily T-zone, so that's not super surprising. I am definitely a person that has to set my makeup in the T-zone area, and if I want it to stay, especially with mask wearing, I have to use a setting spray, or I choose to use a setting spray to help with that. But that powder, I don't feel like emphasizes anything and the foundation doesn't either. I just don't think it does anything to blur anything, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but it's wearing really well. It's actually intact and I've had a mask on and off for, I don't know, three hours or four hours. So I'm pretty impressed with how it's wearing. Um, the eyeshadow is wearing well. I would say at this you know, looking at it in this way, I, there was a little bit more blending that I, I could have done, but you know, from like a normal distance, you're about a foot away from me right now, you can't really notice it, you know? So no biggie, um, it's not going anywhere, it's not transferring. Um, the mascara is transferring a little bit up here, and I do get that with that one, uh, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, but and the lipstick is mostly gone. It's probably on my mask or came off when I was eating or drinking something. So, um, but everything is looking good. I'm impressed. This is definitely a more natural finish uh, foundation. So on a days where you are wanting that dewy natural look, then this is definitely um, a foundation to to have. So, yep, looking good. I will check back in just before I wash everything off in a few more hours and we'll see how everything is going. Hey guys, I'm doing my last check-in of the day and it's been about 11 and a half hours of wear with this foundation. And you know, it's mostly intact. Um, so I am again impressed with that. The oiliness is not that bad. I mean, I could I blot and powder a little bit? Yeah, but it's really not that bad. So I think this foundation is perfect for a more natural light coverage day. You know, when you're looking for that non-matte kind of look, you know, less coverage kind of thing. Do I think that this is, you know, a must-have stable foundation? Not if you have oily skin, not if you live in a humid area, um, you know, so I would think about those things before you purchased it, but 
again, still impressed and um, I would wear it again. And it's winter here in Florida, which doesn't mean a whole lot, but at least for the next couple of months, it'll be cooler. So I can get away with wearing this foundation and having those more, you know, no makeup, makeup kind of days. So uh, everything else I think did really well. I don't know that the blush is there that much anymore, but the bronzer definitely is. And maybe I was just a little too light handed with the blush because um, I just tend to be. Eyebrows haven't gone anywhere. And like I said before, I think the mascara has transferred a little bit and I do get it with that one. So I don't know that I would purchase that one again. L'Oreal makes another voluminous one that I really like and it doesn't do that. And I don't know if it's because it doesn't make the lashes as long, so they're not touching up there, but I'm kind of okay with it. If you don't want to be making it as long, but you're not going to transfer, <laughs> it's not something I have to worry about, then, then I'm good with that. So the other thing that I noticed with what I was wearing today is that I, and I'm tired, so this was bound to happen, but I do, I am noticing, you know, a lot of fine lines here and I feel like it's emphasized a little bit more. I usually love the Pat McGrath concealer, but I, I think I might have forgotten that you only need the tiniest little bit of it. So I might have grabbed too much and I think... I'm still kind of testing out that KKW Brighten powder. I might have either used too much of it or it may be a powder that just doesn't work for me. So I'm still kind of testing that out, but I just wanted to let you know, if you do have the Pat McGrath, I think it only takes like a very tiny bit to get, um, get your coverage that you need. Uh, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of creasing or at least I kind of struggle with that. So I wanted to let you know about that. So overall, it's a good foundation. Just take into consideration if you have oily skin or you live in a humid area like I do, it may not be one that you grab for all the time. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed and uh, give it a thumbs up if you did like it. And if you like my content, then definitely subscribe to see more. But um, have a good day, have a good night, have a good weekend, and until next time. Oh, I meant to stop it.